So, hello students, welcome back to Electric Vehicle Minor Course. And today uh, we are going to see about chapter 2, that is Electric Vehicle Characteristic. And I have already introduced uh, this chapter 2, in which the first topic is average power calculation. So today I'm going to uh, give you something on this and uh, various important questions I'm going to cover in this lecture. And uh, that is derive the equation of tractive effort on EV. Uh, that will be almost uh, of seven marks. What is rolling resistance coefficient and what factors are important to decide it? That will be three to four marks question. What is drag coefficient? State the equation of the force existing because of aerodynamic drag in detail. That will be also three to four marks. Then explain the effect of gradient on vehicle design. Okay, what will be the total tractive effort if vehicle is running with gradient theta, that is theta degree? So uh, that will be three to four marks. And if you are required to have the total tractive effort equation. That means if you are asked to derive the total uh, tractive effort equation, then that will be of seven marks. Okay, and the next is uh, what is driving cycle? Why is it required to have while deciding the power rating of the vehicle? So today uh, in this particular lecture, we are going to cover up on this question. And to cover these questions, I had referred the two books, okay, which you can see at the end. Okay, thank you very much. Do watch the full video to understand the tractive effort equation because this is very, very important to understand while designing the various ratings of the motor, battery, and overall vehicle. Whether it is two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler, or maybe your you know drawn, maybe your boat, anything, this is quite important to understand. So watch this video completely. And if you have any question related to your own model, you may drop into this. Okay, so watch the video completely. And at the end, you will see the reference books. Thank you. Hello students, welcome back to our electric vehicle minor course. And this is uh, something on chapter two. And as I had already introduced chapter two, what we are going to learn in this chapter as far as electric vehicle minor course from G2 is concerned. So, uh, so far, whatever we had learned, that is, you know, some introductory. But today onwards, what we are going to learn is something very important for design point of view. And especially for selection of uh, different ratings for motor uh, and you know the vehicle overall vehicle design so uh, i'm going to cover this uh, topic in two portion and that that is average power calculation average power calculation is very important as far as uh, power rating torque and speed of vehicle is required so for that we need uh, to understand some that definitions and uh, that is you know power what is power what is energy what is force torque acceleration speed distance and gradient so uh, during my lecture i had given you some examples right so uh, that is uh, regarding uh, you know jumping to the same point and covering your energy consumption whether you will calculate uh, that as uh, uh, you know, per second, how much energy you are going to consume, or whether you will consider that as work done or not, such kind of examples I had considered during the lectures. So, uh, if we see the power, that is uh, generally what we used to say is uh, ability to do the work or to do something, right? And energy is whatever ability you are having uh, that will be uh, taken care by the energy with respect to the time. And that is why there is a relation between power and energy. Then there comes force and torque. So we must know the Newton's law uh, 
when the force is there unless and until you don't apply the external uh, force the body is not going to move as well as during the static condition also the body or the object requires to get some force to get the stabilized so stabilization is very important and uh, it's very important considered as electric vehicle is there so momentum will come and because the momentum is there force is also there so as you know uh, the force we have mass into acceleration also and uh, as far as you don't provide sufficient force then and the object will not move right so it is something like that if i have object here and if i want to move this object from this to this position okay or either from this to this position so whatever distance i need to cover that requires some amount of force and that depends on the weight of the object the speed at which you want to move this object okay whether it is on horizontal platform or whether it is on the vertical platform uh and there is a relation between torque and force that we know that torque is equal to force multiplied by the radius uh, whatever the location of force is there similarly there is acceleration and speed or velocity so uh, rate of change of speed per unit time that is acceleration and Uh, the distance covered per unit time that is the speed so changing in velocity that will lead to acceleration and change in the location change in the uh, you know point of your coordinate system that will give you the distance so based on that there is a speed so there is a relation between acceleration and speed and the distance right and uh, another point important that is uh, because the slope is there because of the slope there is a gradient so horizontal and vertical levels are there so some important things are uh, to be understood before we go to the basic equation so let us see some relation power is equal to energy divided by time torque is equal to force multiplied by radius well, acceleration is velocity divided by time and the gradient is uh, the slope of angle or maybe vertical divided by horizontal so sometimes it is given in the form of ratio 3 is to 2 or maybe the gradient may be given in radian or degree okay so this is the opening of calculation of power for electric vehicle and we will go in detail of the equation that is the force required for the vehicle to move okay so let us do it come on this is my vehicle uh, which is having force because of weight fg and the acceleration need will require the force to go fa and there are other two forces act acting on the vehicle body that is frr and far uh, what are these things so let us see in detail it says the total force is sum of all this fg is force due to weight okay so overall weight overall mass of the vehicle is going to give you fg which is equal to m into g right now the mass uh, will incorporate vehicle weight as well as the passenger and driver's weight so it is very important to calculate and uh, try to find out exact weight of the vehicle without passengers and that is why while we design the vehicle it is very important to calculate weight and estimate the weight so uh, weight is one of the biggest important criteria for electric vehicle design another is fa that is force due to uh, acceleration so what at what uh, speed you want your vehicle to run okay so that will be fa another is frr which is force due to rolling resistance and, and that is happening in between the vehicle and the road and the contact a area or uh, you know uh, that is our tire the wheel another is far that is force due to air of course i am 
moving in this direction so what amount of force is uh, applied due to air to my body or to the area surface area which is coming in contact with the air that is f a r so total force component the equation will have f d that is force due to weight f a that is force due to required acceleration f r r that is force due to rolling resistance f a r that is force due to aerodynamic resistance or air resistance okay now uh, suppose the vehicle which is having uh, at a gradient theta and it is trying to move upward so let us have the vehicle is having slope of theta and the vehicle is moving upward direction so because of the weight of the vehicle will have two components of it that is a one is in vertical position and another is in horizontal position right so let us understand it so here uh, if theta angle is there fg is there so we'll have two component fg sin theta and fg cos theta and of course fg is nothing but m into g that is mass into gravitational acceleration that is 9.81 meter per second square okay now if this i convert and rotate it uh, with respect to the angle so i'll have my horizontal force that is fg sin theta and vertical that is fg cosine theta so based on that my fg is going to have so uh, basically in this if we see theta is equal to 0 my horizontal force due to weight is going to be zero right so when we design the road vehicles it is very important and when we design in the air vehicle like drones you know airplanes and helicopters um, based on uh, electricity based on battery at that time mass is quite important because the vertical force is very much important in designing so in that case fg cos theta will come largely but in case of road and rail or maybe on the waterway we have fg sin theta so whatever uh, gradient is there based on that that will vary okay so uh, overall in this if we see fg which is the force due to weight and that happens in case of gradient theta will have mg sin theta working on the weight right second uh, comes that is force due to acceleration and which we say is f a is equal to m into a where a is rate of change of the velocity that is dv by dt where uh, dv by dt is nothing but um, the final velocity minus initial velocity and divided by time so based on that we will have the force that is due to required acceleration okay and uh, the next comes that is f r r that is force due to rolling resistance so in that case the equation comes as k r r multiplied by m into g so mostly rolling resistance is not dependent on the velocity but it is purely dependent on the weight of the vehicle and the coefficient of rolling resistance okay the coefficient of rolling resistance varies in between 0.001 to 0.35 and it depends on the type of tire you are using pressure of tire maybe the temperature of tire the type of road the roughness smoothness of the road etc etc okay so f uh, uh, while we are going to uh, have some uh, you know rolling resistance coefficient we have to take care of the following factors okay you can see here the rolling resistance coefficient is varying from 0.001 to 0.35 okay so depending on the your vehicle expectation where your vehicle is going to run as well as which type of tire you are going to have and that is why while we go for uh, air fitting to our tire that means we'll go to air fitting station for our tire we require to have some particular air pressure in the tire and that will affect overall rolling resistance of the vehicle okay the next point comes that is nothing but the force due to aerodynamic drag and that force due to aerodynamic drag is 
nothing but F A R, which is equal to one half. Okay, so here it is 0 0.5 multiplied by air density, which is in kilogram per meter cube into a KD that is drag coefficient multiplied by the front area multiplied by the square of velocity. The frontal area will come as meter square and the velocity will come into meter per second. So while we uh, need to understand the drag coefficient, you must understand from this figure that vehicle shape will also vary the drag coefficient high pressure and low pressure are differences are there. I'm not going in depth of this as this is electric vehicle code. I'm just touching it. So aerodynamic resistance coefficient uh, is having different values based on your front design of your vehicle. Okay. The larger the contact area, the larger the force is there and larger the required power demand will be there. So based on that, your vehicle are designing is made. If you remember, uh, you know, the uh, video of history of electric vehicle, the initial uh, electric vehicle are of headlamp uh, size of uh, body. You know, this kind of body is there. Sometimes in electric vehicle, initial EVs are of this size. It's because the drag coefficient is very late and uh, that will require, uh, you know, less burden that will make less burden on the motors and the battery. Okay, so this is something about aerodynamic drag and resistance. So based on this, if we see total force is FG plus FA plus FRR plus FAR, and here FA comes in uh, the opposite direction, while all the three, that is uh, force due to weight, force due to rolling resistance, and force due to aerodynamic will come into the same direction. and Based on that, if the gradient theta is there, we'll have the normal equation of uh, horizontal force and the vertical force. And based on the horizontal and vertical force, we can derive the equation. And that will conclude with two important things, and that is static equation and dynamic equations of the electric vehicle. Sometimes in GTU, it is asked about you know, uh, the static equations and the dynamic equations, which I'm going to cover into the next lecture. But this is very important equation, which is FG plus or minus FA plus FRR plus FAR. So overall, in case of static equation, if your vehicle is steady, then there is FG, FRR, and FAR. But in case of dynamic equation, it will cover the weight as well as acceleration as well as resistance that is both rolling resistance and aerodynamic resistance also okay so uh, to, in today's lecture i had covered the fundamental equations for the electric vehicle to require and very important question comes in g2 base that is derive the equation of tractive effort tractive effort in case of electric vehicle so uh, you have to uh, derive this equation Second thing comes, what is rolling resistance? That you can easily understand. Third comes, that is aerodynamic resistance. You may cover from the same topic. And if the gradient is theta, what will be the effect of weight on the tractive effort? So that you also you can derive from this lecture, okay? Uh, in the next lecture, we'll go and uh, try to see something that is driving cycle and dynamic equation. So as